everybody, this is Lee, and with this video I'm talking about NAFTA, uh, the impending negotiation that's scheduled to take, take place in mid-August. Um, NAFTA is the North American Free Trade Agreement, um, Bill Clinton's baby, Donald Trump's maybe. This is an article at Truth Out. What is behind the renegotiation of NAFTA? Trumpism and the New Global Economy, and this is by William Robinson. And as I've mentioned on this channel that uh, we're finding out that Donald Trump has been backtracking on just about everything he promised on the campaign trail, that he's backed away from um, military intervention, uh, uh, calling a halt to uh, military interventions that he's gone ahead and done them and that he's currently um, fighting Hillary Clinton's war for her um, in Syria um, and that apparently the United States is arming um, nations that actually sponsor terrorism and not a word said about that. And then also there's questions about Donald Trump's stance on protection, protection for the medical cannabis industry, uh, whether he intends to restrain his um, Attorney General Jeff Sessions from requesting money from Congress to go and viciously attack medical cannabis growers and users. And Trump said that it would be the state's rights to decide that issue, but we have Jeff Sessions um, going pit bull crazy um, or talking like he is or is going to uh, get off the leash and uh, go into a mad frenzy about medical cannabis. And that's part of Donald Trump's administration. Totally contrary to what he said on the campaign trail. And that we see other instances of Donald Trump just backtracking on everything he said in order to win over um, popular support um, and that he's continuing to favor large mega corporations over the rights of the people and that he is not a populist. And so um, he's been fooling people. Um, since he launched his campaign, the greatest trick ever played, and that um, the game is still um, ongoing, and that we come to NAFTA now, um, the trade deals, and that he did away with the Trans-Pacific Partnership for which he was thanked um, by the left and the right, uh, people who saw that as a direct threat to um, constitutional sovereignty of our rights and protections under U.S. law, um, jobs, environment, human rights, things like that. And so it was right that he made that go away. Um, and then on my channel, I've been very cautious because I knew that trade and services agreement um, and then the tra transatlantic trade and investment partnership were still um, somewhere lurking uh, to pout and pounce at us again. And so now we have NAFTA um, and that Tr Donald Trump has said that he wanted to renegotiate it to make a better deal for America, uh, but not necessarily for uh, the American people, maybe for American business. Um, and there is a history of NAFTA included in, in this article. Um, that it was negotiated at a time where digital commerce wasn't as ubiquitous and um, so uh, such a large part of the economy as it is today that right about then, like 1994, I think Amazon had just launched, or maybe it was 1995 it was going to launch, but Amazon was just a notion at the time, and now Amazon is buying Whole Foods. And um, they say that um, a lot, not a lot of people were on the Internet, but there was organizing of resistance via the Internet right about then, 1994. It doesn't really talk about that in this article, but there were people organizing resistance to the WTO, um, and that's how the battle in Seattle 
uh, got off to its uh, roaring start and that people were organizing on the internet and it wasn't really known at the time that that's what was happening. And then that was what took place in North America and then south of the border in Mexico, there was also uh, organizing on the internet of resistance. The Zapatistas were using the internet in Mexico in Chiapas to organize their um, resistance along the same lines to of um, international mega corporations um, attacking the rights of the people. And so um, there were people organizing the internet, but you know, but again, commerce wasn't such a thing um, back then as it is now. And so there's a need to um, renegotiate. And the investor state dispute settlement, apparently it's still part of the discussion, which is troublesome, which is the reason, main reason why people were very anti-Trans-Pacific Partnership. And that if the ISDS is still a part of NAFTA, that maybe we can expect similar resistance. That, again, the investor state dispute settlement is a complete um, violation of our U.S. Constitution. Our U.S. Constitution would be nothing. It would be rendered null and void in the face of the investor state dispute settlement and that we would not be solving um, issues of human rights, environmental rights, consumer protection, any of that would not be settled within our court system. An international tribunal would take over um, and decide that we would have no rights whatsoever. It would basically be subjugating our government to multi-international mega corporations in a nutshell. And that um, if we decided that we didn't want arsenic in our water um, as the cost of doing business, that that would go to the in you know not to our you know court system here in the United States the international tribunal would be like may say well you know what you're hurting their profits and so you, you either take this arsenic and drink it or you pay them for their profits that you have cost them that's the decision making that would come down US Constitution no Forget about that. Forget what you think you know about the U.S. Constitution. It would not um, mean much of anything in, in the face of the investor state dispute settlement. And that's the trouble people have with that. Um, and so now we have um, the issues of the digital economy, which means trade and services uh, on a global level. And that means um, TISA, Trade and Services Agreement, and that NAFTA might adopt some aspects not only of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, but then also of the Trade and Services Agreement to accommodate digital rights. And that's intellectual property, regulations, things like that, uh, digital trade. And so I'll post a link um, to this article in the description, and you can read more about the background of NAFTA the background of Trans-Pacific Partnership, TISA, a little bit, and then also the um, real threat of the international, um, of the investor state dispute settlement and the clear danger that it poses to um, the regular citizen, um, the consumer, the worker, uh, the laborer, um, how much uh, harm that it can cause. And so I say, look with caution uh, when Donald Trump starts talking about NAFTA. Uh, don't pay attention to what he says. Pay attention to what he actually does. Because some of that is just smoke. All that blah 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 about Mexico and stuff, it's smoke. Um, when it comes to money and trade, um, and then also subjugating consumers, citizens, laborers, workers, uh, sometimes all that you think you know is um, just a lot of smoke. And so watch that trump card before it gets slammed on the table. Um, and we'll see what happens. Um, but it might be time to organize um, against um, TPP, TISA, TTIP, perhaps, lurking within the um, confines of NAFTA. 
um, and whether we should uh, be mindful of um, uh, a Trojan horse, we'll say, uh, coming at us in the form of NAFTA. Good luck.